Number one, phone companies tell you that their phone is certified for water and dust resistance. Well, that is right. But what they don't tell you is that if you did damage your phone due to liquid, that actually will not be covered under warranty. So if you dropped your phone into like a swimming pool or if you spilled coffee over your phone and it gets damaged, there's nothing you can do about it. So even if your phone is certified, you might still not want to take a risk. Second, when a smartphone company says that their display has a peak brightness level of 1750 nits or 2400 nits, hold it. It does not mean that when you pull the brightness slider all the way to the max, that is the brightness level you'll hit. Actually, that is typical brightness level. So peak brightness or high brightness mode is when your phone detects there's too much light outside and then it decides to blow the whites and you know increase the brightness that way. But you know, even that happens for a very limited time before your phone says enough, you know, your phone's getting hot, it's not good for your display, so I'm gonna turn it back down. And so if you think about it, it actually makes more sense to buy a phone that has a higher typical brightness level than peak brightness level. Next, when a phone company says that their phones can be charged at 67 watts or 80 watts or 120 watts, well, it doesn't charge at that speed or that power at all times. What it means is that the phone, while charging, at some point will hit that peak charging speed. That's it. So if a OnePlus phone supports 67 watts, well, it might charge at 67 watts just for a few minutes to get a quick boost. But then that's when you realize that your phone is getting hot or your adapter is getting hot. And what happens then is that they lower down the voltage and then they start passing a stable current for like a slower charge. That's why the later half of your charging is slower. So what you should really be looking at is the time it takes to reach, let's say 50%. So if a company says 10 minutes, 50%, that is a more meaningful thing to look at for the most of us. Now, speaking of charging speeds, have you ever wondered why Samsung and Apple never provide crazy fast charging speeds? For this, you've got to understand one thing, that faster charging generally reduces battery's lifespan. And slow charging is very efficient charging and it keeps your battery's health in really good condition. But then see, Samsung and Apple are already selling a lot of phones, they're very established companies, but other companies like Chinese manufacturers or companies like Motorola that are still trying to establish their ground and sell a lot of phones, for them, faster charging is a very nice marketing tactic to appeal to an audience that's looking for that. And that's why even if their phones don't last as long, but they surely charge very fast. And there's a whole group of audience that's looking for that thing. So that's what you've got to understand about this. Next, you would have noticed that brands tend to push you to use their own chargers. Now, why do they do that? The problem is that many will tend to buy cheaper third-party charging adapters that could be detrimental to your phone's battery health. And that's why brands say use our chargers and obviously in that process, make money for themselves. But, but, but that does not mean that you can't use third-party chargers. As long as they're from a reputed company, uh, they understand charging really well and they've got the right protection built in, it's actually fine to use them. In fact, it could be better than the chargers that the companies provide you. Okay, coming to the next one. And you know, there's this whole design thing where companies say our phones have glass back and so it's premium. Says who? Look, glass, it's heavy, it attracts fingerprints and dust, it's slippery and it's fragile. And on top of that, most people tend to put on a case. So they never really get to show off how premium it looks or it feels. But then plastic or vegan leather, if done well, it's lighter, it's not as fragile, doesn't attract half as many fingerprints, um, it's not slippery, gives you a good grip and you don't even need to really put on a case. And that's why instead of going with what just companies say about, you know, glass bag being premium, think about what's your use case and just go with what's better suited for you. Okay, next. Smartphone companies will come up with expensive flagship phones with really expensive or advanced camera components. And then they'll say, you'll get the best photos from this phone. While that is true, it may not be true for you because it ultimately depends on you to take that photo. And if you don't understand lighting, framing or composition or basic photo editing, you'll never get a really good photo. Honestly, I know people with three-year-old mid-range smartphones that can take better photos than most people who walk with a iPhone 15 Pro Max in their hands. And so, you know, don't fall for all the marketing that the smartphone companies do around their cameras. You can get some really good photos even from a mid-ranger. Focus on how to get better at the skill and don't depend so much on the camera hardware only. Now, this next one is a bit critical. You know how at these smartphone launches, these companies talk about 
their new processors or flagship processors and they talk about how fast it is. Matter of fact is that even lower mid-range smartphones and their processors have enough power to support 95% of the things that you do on your phone. Unless, of course, you're a creator. So you shoot a lot of videos on your phone and then you also edit on your phone. Then sure, having the fastest or, you know, a flagship processor on your phone can help ease that process. But then for most of us, what do we even do on our phones? We do phone calls. There's Instagram, there's music, there's uh, emails, there's WhatsApp, there's video calls. I mean, even if you use your phone for work, then there's Google Docs, Sheets, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint. I mean, that pretty much covers everything, right? And I can tell you that even a phone that's about $350 or a less than 20,000 rupees can do all of this very easily. It's got ample power. So you don't really need an iPhone 15 Pro or a Galaxy S23 Ultra for something like this. Now, this next one is specifically for Android. When smartphone makers say that they can give you software updates for three years or four years, well, there's a catch. Actually, there are two catches. First, the software update may arrive very late. So for example, in case of Moto H30, the Android update came almost a year later than when the actual Android update had rolled out. And second, as your phone gets older, the updates come even later. So it can be frustrating, but yeah, it is something to think about if software updates are really important to you. And lastly, I want to touch upon display resolution. Now, you know, smartphone companies sometimes will come up with very high resolution displays like the S23 Ultra or even Sony phones. That high a resolution on a 6.8 inch display is actually a lot. And so much so that you don't even need it. I mean, first of all, the S23 Ultra, for example, it has this really high resolution, but when it comes to you, like in the box, it's not even set to that peak resolution. It's actually at FHD+, so you have to change it to a higher resolution. And second, even if you do shift it to that high resolution, you will not be able to tell the difference up front. It's not really that noticeable. And thirdly, a high resolution display would actually consume more battery because your processor has to push out more pixels and it's not even worth it, again, because you don't really notice that difference. And so what I'm trying to say is that don't worry so much about display resolution today. Almost all phones that come out in the market are at least FHD+, which is actually enough for displays up to 6.8 inches. And you've got nothing to worry about. And instead, what you should worry about is whether it's a 10-bit display or not, whether it's an AMOLED display, whether the refresh rate is at least 120 hertz, and does it support HDR playback on Netflix. So these are more important things when it comes to display and of course brightness. The display resolution, not so much. Anyway, that's pretty much it guys. You know, these were some things I thought were a little misunderstood in the smartphone industry. And hopefully with this video, I'm able to help you with whenever you buy your next phone. So share this video with someone who's thinking of buying their next phone. And if you did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and mark all really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.